What's up, guys? Welcome back to Faith Based Interactions. Now that I've calmed down from the tilt that I was starting to experience at yes, the end of yesterday's episode with everything, uh, we've got this power solution pretty much fully set up. I still need to, I'm pretty sure increasing the size of these input hatches will stop them from turning off if this steam buffer fills up. I'll probably do that a little bit later. In between episodes, I didn't do too much. I set this up, which we'll go into in a second, and I processed some resources, and that's about it. I spent a really long time messing around with this. I've never actually used integrated dynamics before, and it's a really cool mod as someone who did computer science. Uh, I'm not going to go fully into details about how I set all of this up, just because I've never used the mod before, and half of it was following tutorials, half of it was like figuring out on my own. And it's just a little bit of a mess. But basically how it works is this inventory reader reads the um, charge MBT data of these Lapatronic energy orbs. I also made these. And um, the amount of orbs. And then it uses that information to work out the percentage that the battery is charged. At the moment, this is 82% charged. Uh, when it goes below, I think it's 30%. I set it to, it outputs a redstone signal, which then turns all the boilers on. So they start using fuel. As you can see, they're all disabled at the moment. There is machine controller covers on the right-hand side here on all of them. And they're inverted, so redstone on, machine on. And then this reader checks for this signal. And if this is on and this is less than 80, then it stays on. So this is a set reset latch, they're called, or an SR latch. So when the power goes below 30, it turns on. And then when it goes above 80, it turns off is basically how it works. Um, I'm going to be using this mod a lot more in the future. I think I really enjoyed messing around with it. And when I'm a little bit more comfortable with it and I'm making like, my own system for something, then I'll go a bit more into detail about how it all works. But it, as you can see, it's a bit of a mess. All of these are cards that do slightly different things. And there's probably a much simpler solution to do what I have here. But I followed a guide to get the charge. Um, it was posted on the Interactions Discord. And then I converted it to a percentage myself and set up the SR latch. So yeah, that was most of what we did between episodes. So I think the plan for today would be um, I want to make this Aurelia artifact because I think this is mostly doable with what we have. But I will need to process some, Osmo process some Osmoridium because I haven't done that yet. We have the EV Blast Furnace. We have Helium and Osmium and Iridium. That Pretty simple. We've got this from um, processing dusts from the end. So I'll need to process some of that up. The red mat is a little bit more complicated and I want this to make the pedestals from Project E as well. So we'll make a batch of this up and we'll fight the Gaia. And that seems like reasonable obje objectives for today. Um, do I need, actually, do I need IV machinery for this? I do. So before we move on to this, let's get the cheaper version of IV circuits set up, which is the crystal processors. So in order to make these, we will need an IV assembling machine. I think we hopefully have enough. Here we might need to make like one more. So we only have two quantum assemblies left. And in order to make the IV assembling machine, we're going to need four. We will have to make a couple more of these. Like we've made these before. They're not too difficult. It's just the EV circuits, RAM, reinforced circuit boards, casters, small coils, and platinum wire in an EV assembler. So I'll make up, let's say, two more of these. And we will actually need a CEF, so three more of these. So just to give a quick demo of this system, let me see we're at 80% charge. 
if I take out one of the full orbs, and we go down to 76, but we don't have a redstone signal here. This will come on when the reactors are going to come on. So then if we take out some more and go below 30%, which will happen when we take this energy orb out, the system comes on. All of the turbines turn on, it starts using fuel. We still need to automate the fuel, actually. We'll do that today as well. And then as I start putting batteries back in, we're up to 70% charge. The redstone's still on. But when we put this battery in and it goes above 80% or to 80%, the redstone turns off. And it will stay off until it goes back below 30% again. Okay, so we have our quantum assemblies. I don't think we have programmed in any IV components yet other than the machine hole. So that's our first step. And then I want to make an assembling machine. In order to make this, we will need motors. And these tungsten steel rods, neodymium rods, and annealed copper wire, 16x. All right, so now we should be able to make 40. Perfect. Just a little bit of copper, however. I need to actually mine some more. Yeah, very low on copper. Yeah, it should be our 40 IV motors. Really going to have to put some more co processors in that crafting unit. That took ages. I still haven't finished the EV one. I've got to have crafted all this stuff, I just haven't picked it up. So. Right. So we're going to need two of these. Make sure we pick them up this time. Two of these. Okay. And then we should be able to craft these robot arms. There's our robot arms. I'll program these in when we have the better circuits. Now we should be able to make our IV assembler. I'll just we need platinum cable for this and then the IV machine hole. I don't think we've programmed platinum cable yet. Oh no, we have. So here's our IV assembling machine. And then we are also going to want a IVCF. Four volt should do for now. And this needs four X tungsten wire. And for its red output cable. And there's our Forex CF. We all need some stellar alloy wires, which we haven't programmed yet. And we need a extension for that. That's our first IV machine all set up. It's really nice seeing the white machine holes. I think these look a lot nicer than these grey ones. Okay, so now that we have that set up, in order to make these crystal processors, we are also going to need crystal CPUs. And these come from engraved crystal engraved, engraved crystal chips through an IV precision laser engraver. So we are going to have to make some more IV machines. This recipe we can do at HV. We will need multi-layer fiber reinforced circuit boards. These are really easy and we can do these at HV as well. We have the nano CPUs. And we can do this at HV as well. Hopefully I've got some niobium. Something that I remember having. I assume it's a byproduct from some sort of ore processing. I do have a little bit, yeah. And this has to go through the blast furnace on its own first. I want to make the IV laser engraver. 
It's going to cost us another three circuits, so we'll have to make these up. Make that five circuits. Because we will need the emitter. And we will need some osmium. But I needed to process this anyway. We have enough dust to get us started, I'm pretty sure. Does this require an EV? No, it's just an MV. Maybe we should be able to make the advanced precision laser engraver four now. It's the laser engraver four, actually. Need to make an emitter. Those rods are kind of slow, aren't they? Yeah, they are a little bit. And then now we should be able to make this. There we go. Another quest. It's so rare that you get requests for anything now. Throw this onto my IV line. And we're looking to make crystal CPU. So this will take an emerald lens. First, we need to make these engraved crystal chips. Which way do we want to make them? We don't have any olivine exquisite, so I guess exquisite emerald. How many do we get per one? Is it 10? Yeah, that's not too bad. And five buckets of helium. We'll add five of these 1000s on. And then we can put this in our blast furnace. This should have finished with, yeah, making Niobe and Titanium by now. Oh. Yeah, I need to teach you how to make emerald plates as well. So now we should be able to make these engraved crystal chips. And we'll just grab a spare emerald plate. I should get one, I think. I guess I'll just make some more because it's going to make me wait until the craft finishes for the other ones. We will throw this in the lit in the lathe and get the emerald lens. Oh no, do you need to be IV as well? No. Ten, one, ten. And one, five. Can I not do five thousand K in tungsten steel? Oh, I can't. Down the rabbit hole we go, we need a new coil block. So the next one with a quest is the superconducting. This is really kind of expensive. Need what? Two stack? Well, one stack would be enough for one, I guess. Two stacks of this. Tempting just to make house SSG. It's considerably cheaper. Tungsten steel, chrome, molybdenum, vanadium. Yeah, I think we'll just make high speed steel. We can't do either of these. The next quest is for these, but I need to get a stack of two X's, which is two stacks of one X's is It'd be 42 pumps. God, am I really gonna do it this way? Yeah, let's see if I can make enough superconducting wire. Uh, no, I need way more than that. Okay, take two. Nice. And then I'm pretty sure if I make two X. 
and throw those into this assembling machine. And then we have eight superconducting coil blocks, which completes the quest, which should give me another eight for free, I believe. Yeah. Okay, so now we can have one maxed out set of coils on a blast furnace. No, I'm making up enough superconductor anytime soon to do more blast furnaces, but At least we have one that we don't need to worry about the coils on for the rest of the pack. And we have a stack of superconducting wire, which will no doubt come in handy for some other stuff. Okay, so that gives us our 10 engraved crystal chips. And we'll put those through this laser engraver. And this will give us our crystal CPUs. Nice. What else do we need for these crystal processors? So if we're going to make 10 for now. Thinking about it, we probably ought to make up 16 just to finish this quest off. Let's do 16 and I will also set up um, those are the wrong ones. Uh, these real quickly. Okay, I think this should be everything for these. And here are our crystal processors. Okay, so now that we've got these crystal processors, and we can make the IV circuits much cheaper, I will go ahead and set up another CF and an energy hatch on our superconducting uh, blast furnace up there. Okay, try and get rid of this wire as well. And then IV input hatch. VCF. And do we have Stellar Alloy Flex? Now this should be running at IV. Very nice. Okay, so red matter, we will first need this dark matter. This is two buckets of primal mana, one void crystal, empowered void crystal, and four vanadium ingots. Two buckets of primal mana on here. And we're going to pop these into the our on demand EBF. And we should be able to make like 30 of these. These are kind of slow. And then if we make the red matter pattern, one void metal, four dark matter, and ten life essence. Is that four for one? Yeah, it is. I'm going to pop that in there. And we'll just wait for these to craft. Now we have 32 dark matter. I don't think this is a quest. No, it's a Minecraft quest, not a Feed the Beast quest. And then for red matter, let's just make four for now. And we'll get four from a quest. These are also kind of slow. Oh, I let my power run out. That just happens sometimes. I turned off the meter because it was just like kind of in the way. Also, this just recent this just cycled for the first time since I started recording, which was about four hours ago. 
and uh, used 13 buckets of uranium hexafluoride. And that's with the EBFs running as well as uh, ore processing. So once I fill this up, it really shouldn't turn on all that often. You can tell it's just turned off because the rotors are still cooling down. This is a little bit over a third of the battery capacity. And this is still going up slightly just because the rotors haven't finished yet. Uh, red matter has finished now. Which gets us actually two quests, I think, maybe. That one gives us four more red matter. I think there was another one in here. Yeah, this one doesn't have a reward though. We're actually very nearly done with the metallurgy chapter, I think. I can complete nearly all of these at this point. Actually, I haven't checked in a while. How's our gel toluene doing? 1500 and it's four per TNT. I might need to supplement that a little bit. Because we're probably going to start generating neutronium soon. The video is already getting on a bit, so it seems we went down a couple of rabbit holes. So rather than trying to go to Aurelia today, we'll save the guy fight and Aurelia for tomorrow. And we will work on the... I want to build this Dark Mats pedestal. I want two of these, in fact. And then I want um, a repair charm. We probably already have most of this stuff. Do I not have any black boards? Oh, I just need to put it through an autoclave. I need four of these. Uh, six tungsten plates. One more. Six tungsten plates. We need to. We should be able to actually just put this recipe in, I think. Two nether star plates. Two skystone brick, which is the altar cap skystone shape bus. There's like three different types of skystone block. I always get confused as to which one's which. So it's just the resonating gems. I think I have to make those up. Yeah, I do. I have to make some aquamarine as well. And then this restart recharge pedestal, two gold rods, four diamond plates, two vis resonator, and three nether brick slabs. Two vis resonators, two gold rods, nether brick slabs. I actually need two more diamond plates. This terminal here. Missing, uh, oh, we're missing Ordo. Yeah, now I'm just confused. Five air, five Ordo. Thank you. Now I just need to make up the resonating gems. These are really easy. Perfect. And now I should be able to get two of these. Very nice. There we go. And then um just put these here and here for now. The reason I wanted two is because we got this lifestyle which restores health and hunger every 30 seconds. And we put that on one of the uh, pedestals. Now hopefully I just don't have to worry about eating and healing myself when we're at the base. And then and I also want to make this repair talisman. Which restores one durability every 250 seconds. So it's pretty slow, but I I, have, I spend like so much time in this pack around the base that that should actually 
work out quite well. So we've got the dark matter. We need two of each dust, one pristine gas matter and one infinity reagent. Okay, so dark matter in the middle. Dust, infinity reagent. Medium, high and low covalence dust. Oh, I did not. We don't have the essences. Um, I don't even remember what I used to get these. Or at least we're stable. We're gaining more than we're losing, so um, it's a great time to not work. Why aren't you emptying? I have no idea why this is suddenly broken. Um, I guess it wants whatever that hammer and nails is first. Fabrico. And tables. There we go, now it's pulling the order. So at least that one's working. Fabrico, sorry. Do I have room for the best? Yeah, I think so. Okay, now now that's work. I I don't know. We just need more ordo now. Oh no, you don't. You don't need to do that. No, I don't have enough ordo. <laughs> okay, there we go. There is our repair talisman. And that is why you shouldn't rush Thorncraft because I just made a bunch of mistakes back to back. Never put that there. And that will hopefully repair my armor over time. Yeah, I've actually gone over the time that I had for recording today, so I'm going to have to end this episode here. Thanks everyone for watching. Tomorrow we go to Aurelia and we'll see what we get from there. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Leave any feedback down in the comments and I'll catch you next time. Bye.